Hi, everybody. My name is Sasha Dade, and my presentation is on the biography and criticisms of John Keats. And I'm going to apologize now if I mispronounce anything. So sorry in advance. Um, the start of John Keats. So John Keats was born in London on the third, October 31st, 1795. And he was the eldest of Thomas and Francis Jenning Keats, four children. He died at the age of 25. Um, it said that he was born in his grandfather's stable, the Swan and Hoop, but there's no evidence of that. But um, not much is known about his home life, but it is believed it was a very happy one and that his family was very close. His mother loved him very much and his father owned his own business, which was very successful. Um, John Keats attended the Enfield Academy at the age of eight. April, oh, what's the next slide? Um, so this next part is about the tragedy of his, of his life that really just changed the course of his life. and. Um, so it started on April 15th in 1804. Um, his father was injured in a horse accident and in the end died the next day. Um, two months later, his mother moved them in with her mother and was re remarried to William Rawlings. The marriage was detrimental and eventually led to Frances leaving her family. She returned in 1808 with tuberculosis and died in March 1809. Later, his grandmother appointed two merchants, Richard Abbey and John Rowland Sandal, as guardians. They withheld, it soon came out to um, John's sister that they were withholding money from them. And eventually they figured out like they had a lot more money than they thought that their grandmother had left for them. Um, let's look slide. Um, so in his teens, he became very close with Coden. I want to say his name is Coden Clark and, um, his father, who was the headmaster of the school, John Clark. He excelled at, in literature at Clark school, winning many awards for his writing. Coden's, Coden Clark's, Coden Clark said the books that were his constantly recurrent sources of attraction were, Tukey's Pythonian and Lamparius Classical Dictionary and Spence's Polymetus. I know I butchered those, but we're going to just continue. Um, he translated Ionid and continued learning French on his own. He later was an apprentice to Thomas Hammond, a respected surgeon. In 1816, Keats became a licensed apothe apothecary, but never actually practiced this profession, deciding to write poetry instead. He then met Leah Hunt, an editor of The Examiner, who, pu who published his sonnets on first looking into Chapman's Homer and O oh Solitude. Leah then um, introduced him to a group of literary men who helped him publish more of his work, which was the start to his ending chapters. So after Leo published his sonnets, she introduced him to a group of um, literary men who helped him publish more of his work. Once his brother got sick with tuberculosis, he returned home to care for him and started writing Hyperion. While at home, he fell in love with um, Fanny Brock. He briefly stopped working on Hyperion after his brother's death, but returned to it in 1819 as the and renamed it the Fall of the Hyperion. The Fall of Hyperion. The same year, he had tuber tuberculosis as well and died on February 23rd, 1821. So for the criticisms of John Keats, there wasn't much being said without me having to like read all his work in my opinion, but um, 
he was very much in his lifetime criticized very harshly. He wasn't very favored. And I read that it had a lot to do with politics. Like nobody obviously wanted to um, accept his new way or his new ideas basically. And many of them, some of the quotes that were said were um, basically outside of his friend, Leah Hunt's circle of liberal intellectuals, they, the generally conservative reviewers of the day attacked his work as mawkish and bad mannered as the work of an upstart vulgar cockney po poetaster and as consisting of the most incongruous ideas in the most uncouth language. Um, in the summer of 1818, J.G. Lockhart in the Lackwoods Edinburgh Magazine and J.W. Crocker in the Quarterly Review delivered very harsh blows to Keats, um, Keats' work. Basically, he started to, people started to appreciate his work in the, in the 19th centuries, but there were still, um, still criticisms of him because of these people's reviews on his work. And some of it carried into the 20th century, but for the most part, his work was starting to be seen as um, art, basically. Um, but in that time, they recommended that he abandon, abandon his poetic mania and return to his profession in apothecary. It was not until the 20th century that his work started to be appreciated. He was regarded as one of the most beloved English poets and influenced, influenced numerous poets and writers. Um, that is all for my presentation. These are my works cited if you guys wanted to look at um, the sources that I use and they go more in depth about him and his life and about his work. But that was just a summary of it all. So thank you for listening. Bye.